Hey everybody, Eric Schweitzer here, and welcome back to The Gamer Aces, the world's first video game award show. Joined once again by George Foster. Hello, hello. And the gamer's editor-in-chief, Stacey Henley. Hello. Yesterday, uh, if you didn't join us, we went through our first five awards. Those were all centered around characters. You can click here or here or wherever it pops up if you would like to see <laughs> our first awards. Today, Stacey, tell us what our category is. Uh, today's awards are for presentation. So these are all about how the game is presented to us through um, writing and visuals mostly. Excellent. Tell us our first category. So I said this was a little bit wider than the character awards, and our first category is for best character writing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> some somewhat of a link there. Uh, this is for any game with expertly written characters, including their development and dynamics. Now we have a separate award, the next award, for storytelling. So it's not really the narrative what happens; it's the individual interactions with the characters and how they perhaps change over the course of the game. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, each award has three nominees, unless there was a tie within the nominations, in which case they will go up to uh, four nominees, or in some cases, five. This one, however, has just your three nominees for Best Character Writing, uh, and they are Baldur's Gate 3, mm -hmm. Alan Wake 2, mm -hmm. and Final Fantasy 16. Not yeah. any surprises here. Yeah. Um, I do want to plug one of my nominees. Uh, Very possibly also my nominees. Go ahead. <laughs> Before we talk about the actual nominees, this category feels tailor-made for a little game called Slay the Princess. I also nominated <laughs> Slay the Princess. Fortunately, between us, that wasn't enough to get it on the ballot. This is a game that creates a, a new character and a new relationship every five minutes and tells a complete story about who those characters are. Uh, it is so well done. It's it's fantastic. If you have not played Slay the Princess, I highly recommend it. Um, my I also while we're doing this, because I want to share some of the smaller indie games. They do get on the dog on some other places. I also have Goodbye Volcano High, a game that I was mostly yeah. disappointed by, but I felt the interaction between characters and just how they were able to present characters who were sad without it being a game about sadness, I thought was very impressive. I think too, there's a lot of media these days um, where it avoids kind of sadness, everything, everything's great. Um, and I think something like Goodbye Looking Ohio that can have quite a bouncy tone, can be very accessible and friendly in its visuals, and yet present a really searingly tragic story underneath it all. I felt, I know it's a topic story there, but the way the characters react to the situation, mm -hmm. I think, is far stronger than the, the narrative itself. Yeah. Um, George, what small game did you nominate? Was it perhaps Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> it was Star Wars. Um, <laughs> yeah, again, um, I just think compared to Fallen Order, which I understood the criticisms of, but I still thought had good writing. I still thought it had likable characters that you cared about. I think it was a huge step up for all of the returning characters and everyone who's new as well. Um, Cal especially like I talked about with the last one we did. Um, he He's just evolved a lot. You really see a different side of him. Like he's weary, he's tired, and that all comes down to the writing. It's just like a huge step up from Fallen Order, and I hope they top if it. If we had a most improved category, it would certainly go yeah, that to would be, Jedi oh, Survivor. Yeah. That would be, that would be Survivor all the way. Yeah. Um, so with this yep. one, this is not only our biggest win percentage-wise, it's also the only category... Uh, or at least in a category where there's only three nominees, where one of those nominees didn't get a vote it, once we got to the shortlist stage. Wow. All the editors across the site voted for this, and most of them is a pretty good spread. There's a decent amount. There's one game here that, despite being having enough votes to be nominated originally, didn't get any votes in this round. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And that game's Final Fantasy. Uh, it is not. Oh. Well, it ain't Baldur's Gate. Because <laughs> <It's Alan Wake. laughs> um, the yeah the winner of best character writing is in fact Baldur's Gate. Uh, yeah, Eighty eight percent of the votes, biggest by far the biggest majority that we've, we've had. Um, Karlak was yeah. able to win. Karlak was able to win best character off just twenty nine percent of the votes. So some of these are very well split. 
but uh, 80 percent of this was yeah when when uh, Baldur's gate sweeps all the character categories and even has multiple nominees in each category it's pretty obvious <laughs> Which game is going to win best character writing? Because no one can even agree on who the best characters are, or which ones are best written. Because they, everyone is so beloved. Because <laughs> everyone's so good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think a worthy winner. We probably discussed in the character awards. If you, if you you know go back and watch that, we discussed a lot. I discussed a lot. Eric and George didn't agree. <laughs> um, we, we, we 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 stood from afar and nodded our head. Well, <laughs> well, we can't disagree with any of it. No, it's just you know. <laughs> it's just the normie awards i thought we were the gamer aces yeah <laughs> hey i thought I, star wars i'm i'm no better <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, the, these ones have got some quite interesting parts to them uh and next up we have best storytelling this is for any game with an effectively told and interesting story including elements like plot pacing side quests and world buildings not just the main narrative is good but how the game tells its story uh, obviously separate from character writing and again we have three nominees. The first nominee is Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, the second is Alan Wake 2. And the third nominee is a smaller game this time. It's Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Honjo. Oh, Our wow. first appearance. A game that I nominated cool. alongside Slay the Princess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to hear a little bit about that. I want to give th this... I want to give a shout out. This might... Um, this might not hit your ear right at first but <laughs> i nominated tears of the kingdom um and maybe this is a little bit along the lines of most improved once again but for a zelda game there's some really interesting stuff going on in this uh in the story of this game uh especially in the ending but also you know it has that immersive sim quality where so much of the storytelling is the way that you play the game and approach the world. You're both looking at me like I'm an insane. No, thing. It's, no, a, no. It's, a, it's a thing Zelda fans love to say. Part of the storytelling is things that aren't story because there's none. It's in the other stuff. Just the way you like <laughs> throw an axe is so much narrative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally just didn't like Tears of the Kingdom story much. I, I really liked how Breath of the Wild did it. I think that really was tell your own story and I think Tears of the Kingdom was you can tell your own story in these specific parts. No, I think I think I would disagree with that actually. I think Tears of the Kingdom delivered its narrative better, but that's possibly because I was less willing to meet the game on its terms and explore fully in Breath of the Wild. Um, which is my personal style of play as opposed to necessarily a flaw with the game. But that's that's how I would feel about the, the narrative of Zelda. I would agree that Tears of the Kingdom's way of doing it feels more engaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is <laughs> this is Alan Wake's award. Alan Wake hasn't won anything yet, and that's yep. a crime against humanity. Yeah, I hadn't really got far enough into Alan Wake 2 at the time to nominate it, but I would now I have played more, I would love this to win. Uh, I actually did vote Baldur's Gate 3 for this one. Cause even with my limited time, like I was totally sucked in. So I started playing other games. I was like all the way in. I was like I'm a Dungeons and Dragons guy now. <laughs> um, that didn't last, but for a while I was really in it. I, despite loving about this game, I just didn't nominate it for this, not because I hate the storytelling, just because I felt there were games that specifically, like I said at the start of the character awards video, specifically honing in on one element, I don't feel that is a place where Baldur's Gate excels as much as it does in other areas. I went for Alan Wake, Paranormal Sight, and Slay the Princess, and I actually voted for Alan Wake in this one, even though I love Paranormal Sight, I've been Certainly, out of us three, the one to you know go to bat for it. Um, big, big fan of how Wake does its storytelling, um, specifically, I guess, the stuff around um, world building and how it's paced. I just, I, I think the the way it narrates its own world is fascinating. Mm. Um, mm. And. The winner of Best Storytelling is Alan Wake 2. Yeah, First award. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. enough, good. Alan Wake in this. Um, and Baldur's Gate came last. Paranormal Sight finished above uh, Baldur's Gate in the vote. Yeah. Do you think everyone got sick of giving Baldur's Gate every vote? Um, I think this prob I think what probably happened is, like me, there were some people who nominated Baldur's Gate in a lot of things because they love it and it kind of got oh. a nominee in any kind of weird fit. And then I, I think there were probably some people who looked at it and thought 
this is not necessarily a place where it excels as much. Yeah. It's difficult. It's it's probably rated against graded against a curve a little bit. It's so good at everything. If it was just good at if it just did the story the way it does it like this and didn't have all of the character stuff in it and didn't have all of the, the depth and the dice rolls and all those sorts of things. Yeah. Then I think more people would talk about how great the story is. But I think because it's way down the list of reasons to play Baldur's Gate, you know, stop the elder brain like yeah. Um, I right. think that's hmm. probably why it's not getting as much as much love. It's a it's a cool category and I think if we had a like if we also had a most unconventional storytelling these same three games yes would have, would have been nominated um yes. and again we would both say why is it the princess yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um, um, I love uh, I love Alan Wake too I'm glad we finally get a chance to to award it for being so cool um, and for such a weird style of storytelling that includes all of these all of these different elements that don't usually come together this way uh in video games i mean there's a whole movie in the middle of this game there's a, an entire yeah. like cons quality short film like stuffed in the middle of this game um uh, no I, I love the way i'm making the storytelling i just i just think it's so clever yeah yep Moving on now to some of the more visual aspects, mm -hmm. uh, we have most unique art style. Now, when I was doing these, when I was doing these awards, I specifically looked at. I don't want to say best art style. I wanted something that highlighted the kind of innovativeness in which games can be used. I think if you put best art style, a lot of people, not necessarily here, but in general, that's kind of seen as. Well, this game is really photorealistic. This game has got yeah. a great art style, and there is still an art style in that. You know. Spider-Man and The Last of Us look completely different. The Last of Us is very washed out, uh, kind of match the tone of the world. Spider-Man's very colourful. But um, we have gone for some pretty quirky nominees here, which I, I really love. Uh, it's also one where we have a tie. Because this is the only category of the whole thing, whole game of races, where we have five nominees up for it. Mm. Jesus. Um, and they are. High Five Rush. Woohoo! Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Honjo, Slay the Princess, Ooh. World of Horror, which we haven't mentioned at all so far, mm. yep. and Sea of Stars. Uh, this is interesting, because this is specifically most unique, it, like you said. Yes, in the same way that um, you want, what I put was, that has a positive impact on the overall e experience. So, in the same way that the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay isn't necessarily the most original. Most unique art style that has a positive impact on the overall thing. It doesn't necessarily need to mean the, this is the specifically most unique award. It's that the uniqueness of this art style lends itself to what the game is trying to do. Right. Yep. I for This is the first category we've had where I feel like there is a game that does not belong. Is it Sea I, of Stars? It's Sea of Stars. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it, Sea of Stars. It is. As... It's gorgeous. It's pixel art. There's nothing unique about the way that game looks. It's Would very it... well done, but it, we we've seen a lot of games that look like Sea of Stars. Would it make you feel better? I don't know. That despite um, getting nominated here, I didn't get a vote. In the actual list. <laughs> mm, doesn't surprise me. Does not. <laughs> <surprise> <laughs> <me>. Okay. <laughs> the other four had a pretty even split. Um. Actually, one vote in it between first and second, and then there's a type of second and third, then one vote between um, third and fourth. So it's pretty tight. Um, yeah. But see, it starts no show. I'd um, like to shout out quickly Pizza Tower, which I, is just. I'm not in Pizza Tower for this. Yep. Iconic. So good. Hand drawn. Looks bellissimo. Yeah. I think. I And, and you know, maybe there's an argument to be made that. It, because Pizza Tower is inspired by other things, but its style yeah. is very singularly yeah. Pizza Tower. Yeah. yeah. Like, wh it. if there are other games like that, we will compare them to Pizza Tower. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would say World of Horror is the most unique, though. Like, as much as I'd love to shout Hi Fi Rush from the rooftops, gorgeous game, but World of Horror is just. There's literally nothing else like it. Yeah, the creation behind World of Horror, people don't know, was made um, in paint as well, so. Not only does it look 
um, so unique it's got such an interesting story behind it. Um, World of Horror, fantastic nominee to have here. Exactly the point of having these awards to have those sorts of games in there. Mm -hmm. um, but Slay the Princess, though. Unfortunately, not the the winner. <laughs> the, uh, the winner of most unique art style uh, is Slay the Princess. Yes, cool. Gets itself an award. Um, for a I'm not a big visual novel guy, I and mean, this counts. It's not. It's more of a visual novella or a visual short story. But um, man, the 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 presentation is very haunting. I did not expect, and and I you know part of that's the sound design, part of that's the voice acting as well. But uh, I didn't expect to be so terrified by these like drawings of creepy princesses. <laughs> but it really gets to you. I need to play this damn game. Please do. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have best character design. Uh, this Ooh. is and going by the uh, description, well, mainly focused on aesthetics, but also includes aesthetic integration with gameplay and personality. So it should consider both the art style, uh, the costuming, and the overall design of the character themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like costume design at uh, in cinema. Obviously, there's so much more to it with uh, gaming. Uh, three nominees this time, back to three. We have Baldur's Gate 3, we have Hi-Fi Rush, and first appearance in these awards, Street Fighter 6. Yep, I voted Street Fighter. Well, Such good redesigns for the whole cast. They all look so much better. So I picked specific characters, so I did this one wrong. Yeah, I counted that for individual games. So. Um, Hi-Fi, great as well. Um I specifically love Chai's design. I think I'm just in love with Chai. It's probably <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you guys now, but it works with the art style. They all just look very modern. They all look very cool, all very memorable. Um, and then another one I had that isn't that hasn't appeared here is Mortal Kombat 1, which I just thought, again, was good redesign for the whole cast. Coming up in the same year as Street Fighter 6, I don't think that was going to stand a chance. Oh, Street Fighter 6 yeah. clears, absolutely, but I wanted to give it a shout out, at least. I'll shout out a game we haven't talked about yet. Now, again, I picked a specific character, which was Nemu from Remnant 2. But I yeah. think it's fair to include Remnant 2 across the board for for its monster designs. And for, you know, I think it, it does have really unique, interesting character designs. But uh, Nemu is not that important of a character, more important in the expansion than the rest of the game. But But the design of that character is so cool that she ends up becoming sort of like a mascot. You see her in all the key art and stuff um, just because it's such a standout character who has a very small role in this game. But yeah, That's one of the few games that we've mentioned looking across the nominees that I had very, very little experience on. Mm -hmm. I try to stay across as many games. Like, even if I don't get to finish them all, it's, you know, can't really finish a game. Like, I guess Camp needs a story of 356, but you know, I, mean, I try to like, experience a lot of the games there. Mm -hmm. um, Remnant 2 is one of the ones that I just... Hands it's cool. <laughs> cool game. <laughs> um, this was another very, very typo where there's just one in it. Uh, but our winner for best character design <sighs> in its first category is Street Fighter VI. Yeah! Wow. wow. How you can make a character like Luke look good. Like, they made Luke actually look like not a freaky monkey man. So, full point Street Fighter VI there. This is Hell such a yes. fan vote. You have to have like a history with these characters to yeah. appreciate what what yeah, you do Street Fighter does. I think they all look cool anyway, regardless of if you've followed Ryu from like one to six. And I th I think it's oneness off the back of its evolution rather than how good they yeah. look day to day though. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so we have one left in our presentation. Or obviously we still have the feature awards to hand out, which we'll be doing yep. tomorrow. But um, our last one for presentation is Best Creative Direction. This is any game structured with a clever balance of story and gameplay, including an integration of its themes and its reactions to player choice. We have four nominees for this one. We have Baldur's Gate 3, Alan yeah. Wake 2, yeah. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, I believe the first time that's appeared, right? Why yep. 
Yep, and, so far. And uh, Paranormal Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. So, Stacey, talk a little bit about the genesis of this category, because this is similar to one you would see in yes. other awards. Um, so, we have at the Game Awards, which was kind of a jumping off point for this, we have Best Direction. And there's always been a bit of a debate around what precisely that entails, because mm -hmm. um, The Last of Us Part Two won this in 2020. And there was a big debate around, well, it's a well-made game, you know, but... A lot of crunch went into it, a team of 2,000, um, a lot of focus on physics and immersion and those sorts of things, whereas something like Hades, which obviously went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Last of Us in most categories that you lost most of them, but uh, that represented kind of crunch-free, um, much more open design philosophy, um, less sense of kind of hierarchy and, and auteurship. So I've always, since then, particularly, I think, I've always been fascinated by this idea of direction in games. I think a lot of people don't really appreciate it. They think someone writes a story, it gets given to some actors, they act it out, and then someone sits at the computer and makes it happen. And there's yeah. just so much more to that in terms of how do you embrace what you want your game to say? How do you say it in a way that is, connects with your players? How do you say it in a way that connects with your players? while being approachable to people who aren't your die-hard audience? How do you keep those um, die-hard fans connected while giving them something deeper to offer? And also looking at what I think a lot of people perhaps don't appreciate, maybe some of the people who are you know, watching this video and involved in um, a in deeper interest in games, but in general, people who just play games, the idea that a game is not really that different from a movie or a book. It's not written, yeah, sure, somehow just to kind of shoot this thing, get this money, and pay us for battle passes. Mm -hmm. But most of them have this sense of storytelling and a, a thematic purpose. They represent more than the thing that they're saying. They're about things more than they... Baldur's Gate is not just a game of um, some goblins and druids and all that kind of... It's, it's a much deeper story about um, people being put in different situations, banding together, um, it examines things like religion, it examines things like um, found family. Obviously, Alan Wake too, he's literally a writer, so there's that element to it. But it's not just a scary story. It's about what we are afraid of and our innermost fears and how we project our own feelings and desire to create into the world. It's very pointed that he is a writer who writes his own failings into existence. For someone like Sam Lake, who's a very involved writer, the fact where he plays one of the characters, that's a very important thematic um, element, mm -hmm. I think. So it was really to try and like showcase that there is a sense of games that can't be defined by this has cool characters, or as we'll discuss in the features awards, uh, this has a cool level. You know, right? Something. Mm -hmm. Not intangible, but that goes beyond the basics that award shows never make time for because they like to look at the bit. You know, we don't have any awards here for best action game, best RPG game, yeah, because they handle better things. I wanted to look at something closer to game creation as opposed to game yeah. sales. Yep. And what do we think about these nominees, George? Um, I I feel like Baldur's Gate Three. You know, we've joked a lot about. It's sweeping. Um, <laughs> I think in this case, I, I can't see any other winner. I think that it is just mind blowing what it manages. Um, I would like to shout out, surprise, surprise, Hi Fi Rush. Um, I think the way that they've, like the vision behind that and the way they've implemented it with like just little things like Chai clicking in tune to the beat and everything in the game being done to a beat and the world reacting to it. Just everything tying together like it does, I think. Well, perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I my my vote here is Alan Wake. Um, yeah. I think that it what it, what it will be up against is this notion that the the actual moment to moment gameplay isn't that strong. I think that's sort of an overall remedy issue. Yes, that people mm -hmm. have. Uh, I feel that way about every Remedy game except this one. I think that they, they finally did dial it in. 
personally for Alan Wake too, but I totally get what what people mean. That surprises they... me because I I feel it's just uh, we've had this conversation before, but I feel it's a slight step backwards in that regard from Control in terms yeah. of moment to moment gameplay. I, yeah, I feel the opposite. We I, I have, think I we have done that well. video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I also need to give a nod here to Resident Evil Four. I think if we well, had that's a, a really interesting one. If, yeah. if we had had a category for most swept away, it would <laughs> for me it would be Resident Evil Four because I, it's just when we talk about creative direction, I think where where this one hits is in its uh, pacing and execution. They they made a game that's nothing but set pieces. Which I've yeah. said before, but they like there are no. It is all bangers. There are no duds anywhere in this game. It just flows from beginning to end, and yeah, it's just like you really get lost in, in this one. It's not like the most interesting story. It's not like one that will leaves you with much to think about, but it just like grips you and you hold on tight and, and you just ride this ride through the whole thing. Yeah, and slay the princess. <laughs> I, I nominated Slay the Prince. Yeah. Yeah. I also, um, very briefly, because we haven't mentioned any categories, it, it is in a couple of the categories in the feature awards, but um, I think the game direction in Cocoon is really impressive. Mm -hmm. There's so much in terms of the layout thinking that goes into a game like that, but also it feels like it, there's no words in Cocoon. Like, there's, there's no story to speak of. I also probably could have put something like um, Chance of Sonar in here. There's no story and yet it's all story and i always think games that are able to it's something maybe is unique to um to video games i know films can kind of do this a little bit as well but the the involvement that the games give you makes it i think more impressive or easier to drag you in to a story that it's not there's no a to b there's no purpose for what you're doing there's no character there's no narrative shift it just feels like you're being taken on a journey yeah. um which I found really impressive about Cocoon. I think it was 10th on my game of the year, so you know I liked it mm -hmm. um, quite a bit. Not enough to put it right at the top, lower than stuff like Slay the Princess or um, A Space for the Unbound, which I've also mentioned. But uh, enough about the games that didn't win. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so our our winner for Best Creative Direction and closing the uh, presentation awards of the Gamer Races is Alan Wake 2. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah I'm so deserved. happy with that. I uh, totally well deserved. Definitely deserved. Um, yep. And I need it's... to mention this Paranormal Sight Beat Zelda, which I just think wow. is cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It can't be overstated how. what What's so special about Alan Wake 2 is it, its vision is clear and they go for it. So in such a focused way like we don't have other than like death stranding we don't have like auteur video game experiences like this on this scale like yes. with this budget yep. and this like with so much uh money and time put into a project that is a like very clearly an artist's vision um mm. and that's something really special that's something yeah. we're not going to get that's something only an indie studio can do only yeah. an issue that gets big enough to be able to, to do it as well. As, yeah. You know, Death Stranding is kind of astroturf because it's Kojima kind of flying in. Right. But, um, I, yeah, I think the way Remedy has, has built up um, its own identity is so impressive to see. Yeah. A yeah. Super really... Giant is another game like another M um, studio like that, I think. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. To totally deserved. Like, the, we have to give awards to Alan Wake 2 when Alan Wake 2 has come, come along, you know? Yeah, like it's important to acknowledge uh, what Alan Wake Two does in this industry, so, and and same for Baldur's Gate, absolutely. Yeah, I mean um, they've they've both won pretty handsomely here. Yeah, um, I think I like seeing small indie games get it, but when games like that are the the triple A's, if you like, um, stupid things aside, I think that um, can't be argued with. Yeah. Excellent. We have one more video. We'll be back tomorrow for our last five awards. Stacy, what is the category? Uh, this is for best features. These are different parts of games. We have things like uh, levels and expansions and mechanics, looking at the smaller parts that make up the wider whole of a game. Yeah, fun. Really zooming in on, into some specific parts about the games that we loved last year. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. You can find our full write-up for these awards linked down in the description. 
We'll be back tomorrow for one more video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and visit us at thegamer.com. That's the gamer, no space.